Oh, okay. Wow. Did you hear that too? Or was that just my computer? No, I heard that. <laughs> okay. Um, I do see we have some uh, people joining. So we're going to take just a minute and let, um, let some people uh, join before we start. Okay. And Cindy, I'll pull up, we'll do um, the housekeeping and, and stuff that we do, and then I'll, I'll pull up the PowerPoint in when we're done with all of that. <clears throat> all right. Well, I have a minute after seven. So for the sake of everybody's time this evening, we'll, we'll get started. And if people join, um, in a few minutes, that's okay too. We are recording this, so they will be able to see it um, later on. All right, so welcome to this week's virtual meetup um, hosted by the Epilepsy Foundation of Wisconsin. Um, tonight's topic is long-term care services and the role of ADRCs. Um, we have Cindy Petrosky with us. You'll get to meet her in just a second, but she's there. I don't know, Cindy, if you wanna say hello. Great. Hello, everyone. All right, so before we start, I do have some housekeeping stuff really quick. Um, we are recording this, like I said before. You will be able to see it up on our website um, after Memorial Day. Uh, Kristen is working on the website and um, I don't wanna I don't want to say an exact date, um, but I'm just gonna say after Memorial Day. So if you guys wanna watch this or refer anybody to this, um, you can do so by going to our website. Um, if you're an attendee on this call this evening, please know that you are muted and your videos are also off, but we do, um, we would love if you guys ask questions and you can do that using the Q&A button um, at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to do that while Cindy is presenting or at the very end, we'll open it up to Q&A. Um, so either is just fine. And then uh, for the sake of time, just please know that um, we may not be able to get to all questions this evening. Um, I'm going to have John type an email in the uh, chat section for everybody, which, yep, he's already doing that, um, which is our connect email. So if you think of any questions after the fact, or if something doesn't get answered, you can send the question there um, and we'll get it to Cindy and we can get the answer back to you. And then lastly, um, again, for sake of time, just try to keep questions general. Um, again, like I said, for, for the sake of time this evening. Um, so we're going to do introductions. So my name is Alicia Thompson. I'm the program manager for the Epilepsy Foundation of Wisconsin. We also have John with us. Hi, everybody. I'm John. work with Alicia at the foundation. I manage mostly communications and client support services. Great. Thank you, John. And now I am going to turn it over to Cindy. As I said, um, she will be with us tonight. She is currently the director of the Aging and Disability Resource Center of Portage County. So Cindy, I don't know if you want to say anything, a few words, but I'm going to get your slides up right now. Sure. So uh, yes, I'm currently I am the um, ADRC director for Portage County in Stevens Point coming to you from Rhinelander tonight. Um, but prior to that, I had been the director of the Epilepsy Foundation of what was then Central and Northeast Wisconsin. Um, and uh, the Epilepsy Foundation is very near and dear to my heart. So I was very, um, very flattered when uh, Alicia reached out and asked if I'd be willing to present on this topic. And um, just uh, thrilled to be here. So hopefully I can give you a little information that will be useful to you. Um, uh, again, I, you know, unless you live in Portage County, I can't personally help you, um, but I can uh, get you in touch with, with the correct ADRC if you need that information. So I'm gonna talk about the, the role that aging and disability resource centers play in the provision of long-term care services. So if you could move the slides forward for me, Alicia. So <clears throat> ADRCs were the first step in Wisconsin's long-term care redesign process, which took place more than 20 years ago now, uh, 1998. 
eight counties and one tribe were selected um, to start the ADRC programs. Um, we've transitioned over the years um, from having pilots and second generation and third generation um, ADRCs, but it started with just eight counties and Portage County was one of those. Um, <clears throat> so if you could move to the next slide. In as of October 22nd, 2019, um, it, and it's still true today. There are 46 ADRCs operating in Wisconsin, 12 regional and 34 single counties. So all 72 counties in the state of Wisconsin are served by an ADRC. Next slide. And this shows you all of the different ADRCs. So you can see um, it right in the middle of the state, that dark blue spot is the ADRC of Portage County. And then right above that is the ADRC of central Wisconsin, which covers four counties. And below us um, is ADRC of Adams Green Lake and Washera. And then you have Marquette and Columbia and Dane, um, all as single county ADRCs. Um, so, there's lots of, there are, every county has an ADRC office in it at this point. Next slide. But that has not always been the case. As I mentioned, this started as a pilot program. And so those, those kind of um, peachy orange, dark orange, um, counties that you see on there, those were the original pilots. And then they started adding additional ADRCs over time. And so we, it took a long time. The last ADRCs to come online were Adams County, Rock County, and Dane County, actually. So um, we've come a long way to get to um, having these services available in all 72 counties. All right, next slide. Cindy, I was just going to say there might be a slight delay when I change slides, just so you know. Oh, that's fine. And I apologize, my internet is not letting me do the slides myself. So ADRCs, we're all structured a little differently. Um, you know, as I mentioned, some are multi-county, some are standalone agencies, some are part of their health and human services department. My agency is what we refer to as an integrated agency. So I am a department on aging and an aging and disability resource center um, <clears throat> combined. Uh, the Probably the most important thing to know about all of the ADRCs is if you've seen one ADRC, you've seen one ADRC. Some of them are even nonprofit 501c3 agencies similar to the Epilepsy Foundation. Next slide. So what is long-term care? We, we use that phrase a lot uh, when you're talking about ADRCs and the services that we provide. Um, there's lots of things that go into it. Uh, the idea is to help people meet both their medical and non-medical needs. And we're specifically looking at people with chronic illnesses or disabilities um, who cannot uh, care for themselves for long periods of time. And so they may need things like um, help with dressing, bathing, toileting, um, it could, you know, those are referred to often as the uh, activities of daily living or um, so there's lots of different things that people may need that might qualify them. Another category that that we work with too are frail elders where the person is um, elderly and in very delicate health. Next slide. So these services, uh, long-term care can be provided at home, 
um, uh, whatever that home might be, whether it's an apartment or a house or a mobile home, but a home in the community, in an assisted living facility or um, in a nursing home. Um, the idea, um, and this surpri always surprises a lot of people, is that our goal is to help people stay in their home and off of publicly funded long-term care for as long as possible. So, and if you ask most seniors, um, I can tell you that the vast majority of them are going to, to say that they would prefer to age in their home in the community rather than in a facility. Next slide. Um, so family care is one of the long-term care programs. Um, this combined the state's long-term care for frail elders and adults, the old COP and KIPP programs into one managed care program. And so these are publicly funded. So this is Medicaid. Um, and we serve frail elders age 65 and older, adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities and or physical disabilities age 18 to 64. Next slide. So IRIS, include, respect, I self-direct is Wisconsin self-directed support program. Um, and it, it, seniors or adults with, with um, disabilities uh, may choose this program. They um, have a budget that's determined and then uh, the consumer determines what services that they want and um, who will provide those services for them. In managed care, uh, there's while they do have a self-directed option, you do not have the same level of um, discretion, personal discretion. Next slide, please. So the ADRC, we, we all strive to be warm and welcoming places. So uh, places where people can come to get information about preventive services, long-term care options. We do something that we call options counseling. Um, and we're a single entry point for publicly funded long-term care services. Now we, what we determine is the functional eligibility for the programs. Financial eligibility is determined by income maintenance or economic support units in a county or con consortias, um, which are several counties working together. Next slide, please. So what we provide is free unbiased information about local services and resources, um, information about costs and eligibility information associated with different services, and general information about a wide variety of public benefit programs. And so those are often through our benefit specialists. Some of people may have worked with a disability benefit specialist in the past or an elder benefit specialist. Probably one of the key areas here for the elder benefit specialist is we help people determine their Medicare Part D um, annually. So every year people have to do Medicare Part D again. And um, they, um, they will go through what all the plan options are. And because we're not paid by insurance companies, we're giving you all of the options. We're, we're not trying to sign anybody up for a particular program. Um, what we're most interested in is that the person gets the program that they need and can afford. Uh, next slide, please. So 
So we will do assessments of abilities and risk screens, for instance, falls assessments. A lot of ADRCs will do those. Um, and for those who are unable to pay for services, um, again, we determine the functional eligibility for publicly funded long-term care. Um, and once the, the functional eligibility is determined, then that goes, then that person is moved on to economic support. Next slide, please. I mentioned options counseling um, before, and what this is, is that we talk with people about what are their what are their needs? What, what is it they're looking for help with? Um, and then we look at what are our resources in the community and, and what are their resources to pay for things. And so we help people determine what uh, is their best option. Um, and again, we don't make that decision for them, but we present them with the information that they need to make a good decision. We also do transitioning youth services. So for people who are leaving high school and um, entering adult uh, long-term care. I will, I do have to say that this is one of the trickier services that we do. So we have a lot of families that are very surprised to find out that there's just not nearly as many adult long-term care services as there are long-term care services for children. Um, there's a lot more options for kids um, in terms of supported programming than there are for adults. And I know having worked at the Epilepsy Foundation that many of you are well aware of that. Um, you know, it, the social programs um, where people have an opportunity to go out and do things are just not the same at the adult level as they are at, a, at the level for kids. Next slide, please. So we'll, we also do prevention and early intervention services. So evidence-based classes and programs, we do classes on healthy living with diabetes. We um, do classes on falls prevention. We'll help people um, in the, who are trying to access services and aren't able to quite do it on their own, we can do some short-term service coordination. Uh, we're not social workers and we don't do that long-term, but we can help people get the process started. started. Um, we do enrollment and disenrollment counseling for the publicly funded long-term care program. So someone might decide, oh, I'm going to go into family care and I want to work with, with managed care organization X, and then they get in there and they don't really like managed care organization X, so they might disenroll and re-enroll in a different program, or they might decide they wanna to go to IRIS instead. And so those are things that we assist with. Next slide, please. So the staff at the ADRC, um, and again, every ADRC has different job titles and um, different configurations of their, of their staff, but we have a resource center, ADRC specialists or information assistance specialists. Uh, there's the elder and disability benefit specialists that I mentioned. We now have dementia care specialists. There's registered nurses, community health educators. Uh, we have nutrition as part of what we do because we're an integrated agency. So if somebody needs a meal, we don't have to hunt down another program. Literally, it's down the hall um, for home, de home delivered meals for Portage County. So those are all things that can happen through an ADRC. Next slide, please.
So who are we trying to serve? So older adults, adults with disabilities, but also their families and caregivers. So often it is, um, particularly when you're talking about elders, it, you, you may not, you will talk to the, to the senior um, or elder, obviously, but this, the process may have been started by their daughter or it may have been, uh, maybe the daughter is the primary caregiver and uh, needs respite and needs to figure out how she can get respite. So those are some of the kinds of things that, that we will work with people on. Um, you know, planning for future long-term care needs. Um, I really, you know, very rarely does anybody contact us before the crisis hits, um, unless they're looking uh, to do a transition, transitioning youth. And so it's often um, that that future planning piece needs to take place, but it's it's hard to convince people to do that before they need um, or have a, a direct need for it. Um, and the programs and services for caregivers vary um, from county to county as well. We happen to have a, a division within our agency devoted to caregiver services, but not everyone does that. Um, but the support for caregivers is becoming a larger and larger piece of what we do because there's such a reliance on um, informal uh, caregivers um, or natural supports in the in long-term care that uh, we see there's quite a bit of burnout for those family members. And so we provide support groups for them and some funding to help pay for things because it can a caregiver could spend, you know, um, I think the average is around $8,000 a year out of pocket um, that it costs them to be a caregiver. Next slide, please. So how do you get to an ADRC? Now, of course, this was put together pre-COVID. <laughs> Um, but most of us have reopened. And so there's walk-in office visits. You can call and schedule a visit. Um, you can um, talk to somebody on the phone. There's website. And we do a lot of, of Zoom and Teams and that sort of thing now, which we didn't uh, previously do. So there's a, a number of ways in which you can access staff at an ADRC. And right now we're not currently doing very many home visits, but that is slowly coming back as well, where we can go to the person's home to meet with them. And on several levels, that's my preference is to do it that way, because it's one thing to, you know, if you're sitting in an office and you ask someone who's 88, can they get in and out of the tub on their own? And they say, sure. <laughs> Um, in the office to hear that. Whereas when you're in their home, you can go into the bathroom with them and say, could you show me how you get in and out of the tub? Um, and that gives us a, a lot um, more accurate read when we do the functional screening. Next slide, please. Um, so the state has things that they would like to see ADRCs do as well. And so, you know, it's, it's not just about enrolling people into publicly funded long-term care. They want to see, um, contacts with private pay customers. Um, they want to see, um, more people remaining in their home and healthy at home, um, relocating people from institutional settings. So we call this nursing home relocation. Uh, sometimes people have been placed into a nursing home for a variety of reasons. 
and really don't want to be there. And so we help them figure out how they can move out of the nursing home and back into the community. Um, we provide uh, current, consistent, high quality, supported decision making for citizens. Because sometimes it's <laughs> the hard part is figuring out what information do you need to make the decision? What's important to, to the individual? And so we do supported decision making um, to help them through the process. We don't make the decision for them. We support them in the process to make their own decision. Um, and we have a statewide network um, and look at best practices. Next slide, please. So most of the people that we work with are seniors, you know, compared to the number of people, adults with disabilities who would qualify for publicly funded long-term care. And um, Alicia, I'm gonna ask you to just kind of click through these um, till you see, I think it's 2030 or 35. Okay. Um, but what, what I want you all to look at as you look, oh, as you sorry. see this Going too is fast. that, um, that's okay. Um, you can leave it right where it's at. Okay. Um, you can see the, the state kind of moving from green to blue. And what that means is the percentage of seniors in those counties is growing. And so the, the um, yellow counties have fewer seniors and then light green, and then it gets darker green and then it moves into that blue. So if you would just click through for the rest of those. Is there more? And one more. Okay. This one, oh. stop at this one. Okay. So you can see, whoops, you can see in 2005 what the state looked like for aging and what we're projected to look like in the next 15 years. Our population is aging in Wisconsin. Higher, faster than in many other states. And so helping people make good choices for themselves, accessing the, the services that they need and the care that they need, um, helping them stay healthy in their homes, it makes a, a lot of difference when, for the state when you realize that Medicaid funding is state funding. And so these services are paid for with state tax dollars. And so how do we, how are we good stewards of those funds? And so we need to be aware of this increasing number of seniors. Um, and it's not just, and, and as I say that, please keep in mind, we talk about seniors or, you know, like they're one big group, right? There's actually three distinct generations of seniors right now. You have your World War II, the greatest generation folks who are really leaving us at a, a, at a um, rapid pace these days. Um, and then you have what's called the silent generation, and those are folks who were kids during, during World War II or, um, you know, born during the war. And then you hit the boomers. And the baby boomers um, provide bulk. I mean, there's just a lot of them, right? But not all baby boomers are senior citizens yet. I mean, I can tell you the baby boom goes from 1944 to 1964. And those born in 64 still have, and I know this because I was born in 1964, eight years left to go before we qualify for social security. So there's a lot of people coming down the pike who are swelling these numbers of seniors for long-term care. 
Next slide. All right, any questions? All right, Cindy, I'm going to actually take the PowerPoint down right now. Okay. That's okay, so let me stop. There we go. Perfect, I can see John, I can see you guys, great. Wonderful. John, um, are you good to do the questions? All right. First of all, thank you, Cindy, that was terrific. That was Lots wonderful. of good information there. Uh, I'm looking at a number of questions here. First one, what are the best awesome. options? What's that? I didn't hear what you said. Um, I didn't catch that. Okay. Um, the best what, options for? What are the best options or steps to take for someone who wants to secure long-term care for themselves and aren't working with any family members? Um, contact your ADRC and speak with an information assistance specialist. Uh, talk about what your concerns are. I mean, and, and okay, so let me go back into my Epilepsy Foundation days when Portage County started fam in family care. Um, we were the only county or one of two counties that was at entitlement. So if you applied for family care and you qualified for it, you got into the program right away. So we had people moving to Portage County from all over the state so that they could access publicly funded long-term care in the family care program. But um, not everybody who moved to, this, to Portage County actually ended up qualifying for the program. Um, so there's, there's different things you need to think about. So... Um, are you able to do your own med management? Are there, do you need assistance with things like, you know, those, those activities of daily living? Can you feed yourself? Can, you know, and at your activities of daily living, and then there's the instrumental activities of daily living, your IADL. So do you cook? Can you feed yourself? Um, can you dress yourself? Can you, um, <clears throat> The transportation is a little more iffy because a lot of people don't drive, but that's a particularly sore subject for people who have seizure disorders. Um, as, and in rural areas, you know, do you have access to, to transportation? Um, so kind of think about what it is that you need the services for um, and talk to them about you know, what your needs are, because you, you know, sometimes if, if it's just a ride, maybe, you know, family care might only provide you with a bus pass, but that's only good if you live in a place where there's buses, right? So um, kind of think about what, what your actual need is. Um, obviously with a seizure disorder, you know, most of the time you're fine, but when you have a seizure, you're not, and you may not be for quite a while afterwards, right? I mean, we all know people whose postictal can be a week. Um, some people are lucky and it's five minutes and others it takes forever. And so, um, you know, just kind of figuring out what your needs are. And if you know that ahead of time, I, I mean, if you've given that some thought, it helps you through the process if you can articulate what it is, because obviously you have a medical need, you, you know, and again, not everybody with epilepsy or seizure disorders is going to need publicly funded long-term care, but there are people who do. Um, so kind of give that some thought in terms of what is, what is it that you need to accomplish with your long-term care? Okay. Another question okay. here. Uh, are there caregivers out there with certain programs or agencies that provide simple services? For example, check up on somebody once a day and make sure they got their medications, schedule a ride to a grocery store. There a are. Where might they? Yes. <laughs> um, many, many of the um, ADRC's aging unit, and of course, this is like saying, don't just think of aging. 
Um, our programs aren't just for seniors, um, but um, it, there are many programs out there that will make a phone call. Um, there's some churches that will do it. Your ADRC will know who in your community can provide that. Um, we have a couple of different programs within our own agency that do that, depending on, on who the person is and what the need is. So those things do exist. Um, and then there's some that are paid programs that do that as well. Um, you know, the, the problem with the other programs is that it's always volunteers and, you know, if the volunteer goes on vacation or gets sick and forgets to tell somebody, then we don't have a staff backup and those things happen. But those kinds of programs do exist. And so I would encourage you to ask your um, ADRC about them. I would also say to those listening tonight, um, if you uh, are able to call the Epilepsy Foundation, we can also put you in touch with an ADRC very, very easily. We've done it many, many times. Mm -hmm. oh. um, <clears throat> see yeah. next one here. Um, if insurance will not cover long-term care and the person has no other financial resources, what are their best options? Um, well, so what we basically have been talking about is publicly funded long-term care. So it depends on your income level. Um, and that's where people fall through the cracks because there are a lot of people whose income is too high to qualify for publicly funded, but not sufficient to pay for the, all the services that they need, right? So we know that that exists. I would say to talk to your ADRC, talk about options, counseling, trying, because they will help you try and figure out some of the services in your community that will meet your needs if, if you're not going to be covered by uh, Medicaid. And then, of course, we also have the dual eligible folks who are Medicaid and Medicare. Um, but, you know, the, there are services for people who aren't on publicly funded long-term care and they're hard to, they're not always easy to find, but your ADRC is going to know who does it in your community. Okay. Another question here. Um, can my ADRC, can someone at my ADRC help me with questions about my own Medicare and Medicaid? Yes. So if you are under the age of 60, you want to talk to a disability benefit specialist. You are 60 and older, you want to talk to an elder benefit specialist. Um, the disability benefit specialist helps people apply for SSI and SSDI. <laughs> um, the social security income. And, uh, you know, every county is different. Every county will have slightly different rules or availability, but definitely reach out. And, and, and it, if it doesn't work the first time, don't give up. There's appeals, there's new applications. Um, don't give up on, on applying, um, especially, you know, if, your seizures are preventing you from working. Okay. Is it true or is it a myth that most people with epilepsy don't qualify for SSDI on the first try? <laughs> so the state would tell me that people are not routinely turned down. My experience tells me almost everybody's turned down initially, um, and which is part of why I said keep asking. It is hard to qualify because it has to inter, you know, interfere with your ability to live a normal life, right? And again, seizures run the spectrum. So if your seizure is going to be a simple partial where your hand shakes, you're probably not going to qualify for much of anything. On the other hand, if you 
have um, a more severe seizure or, you know, the old grand mal or petty mal, you know, those sorts of seizures that interrupt your, your cognition um, and you have them with some frequency, that's a little easier to, uh, to make the case. And we certainly know many people uh, with epilepsy who successfully navigate um, the process and, and qualify for SSI or SSDI. Okay. Is ADRC unique to Wisconsin or is it part of a federal network? Um, well, I can tell you the ADRCs originated in Wisconsin. <laughs> Um, that came out of a conversation between uh, a former um, Bureau of Aging and Disability Resources and the then director of the, of the aging unit in Portage County conversation about what would be really helpful for people. And the idea is that you only have to go to one place to get your answers because we have all been moved from spot to spot to spot to spot. And I don't know about you, but by the time I hit the third person, I'm kind of tired of telling my story and I'm pretty ticked off that nobody can answer my questions. So <laughs> the idea is no wrong door. You come in and we're going to help you figure it out. So we started in Wisconsin as a... Um, <clears throat> a pilot, but technically they give Minnesota the credit, although we had ADRCs for years before they did. But if I move to another state, there's probably something similar. Um, they're not all as robust. There are some states that have one ADRC for the whole state. Wow. Um, and like one office. <laughs> um, so it, every state is different. Um, but I have, I have helped reached out to counterparts in other states for family members and other states um, trying to navigate their, the system where they are um, and just trying to figure out what it is. But yeah, it's different everywhere. Okay. That is all the questions I'm seeing right now. If there's anybody left, um, now would be the time to submit a question if you do have one. Um, and again, I'll just say what Alicia had said. If uh, when we're done with this, um, if you do think of something, um, please give us an email at the one I wrote into the chat box. We will get the question to Cindy and get a proper answer for you. So no worries if we finish up and you think of something you know, a half hour from now. But if you do have a question, now would be the time to submit it because I'm not seeing anything else. Alicia, are you? Uh, nope, I don't see anything either. Um, but I just want to also um, say, so thank you, Cindy. Um, I know I already said this to you because I know you're going to have a little vacation, but we appreciate your time so, so much. This is very informative. And, you know, I think some of this stuff, some of this stuff does get a little confusing if people don't really know all the ins and outs and um, but that's why the ADRC is there to, for people to go in and get the help and uh, the answers that they may be seeking. So I thought it was great. Thank you so much again. Um, oh, sorry. The connection is a little funny. You're I welcome. And thank you for the invitation. Um, you know, it's always my pleasure to, uh, to work with the Epilepsy Foundation. And I am going to, to put something out there because I'm hoping you guys will be able to bring it back this year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've worked in, in the disability network for many years now. And um, if you've never gone to adult retreat, you should go to adult <laughs> retreat. It's my favorite thing I ever did as staff. Yay. So... <laughs> Just putting it, at, putting in my plug for everybody. I mean, I love the kids camp too. Camp Phoenix is great, but um, my favorite was always adult retreats. So, we'll see most of our. If you uh, haven't done it. I really encourage you to do it. It's so much fun. That's a nice plug, Cindy. <laughs> yes. It, yeah. All right. Well, good. I, I 
thank you again and and have a wonderful memorial day everybody thank you cindy we appreciate Bye -bye. it Bye. All right, and we'll see you guys next week, Thursday, June 3rd, 7 p.m. Our next VMU is on independent living. So we'll see you, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Good night.